Patriots fans and Seahawks fans, thank you for joining us here today on this Crossover Thursday episode, getting you ready for Sunday's Week 2 matchup, the New England Patriots hosting the Seattle Seahawks, and bringing you right up to kickoff is yours truly, Mike DeBate, host of Locked On Patriots, and of course, Corbin K. Smith, host of Locked On Seahawks. And of course, folks, remember, Crossover Thursday is presented by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you pay $5. And Corbin, as the late great Gorilla Monsoon would say, if this were WrestleMania, the time for the talk has just about ended. If the Seahawks are to come into New England and defeat the Patriots, right now they're favored. What are Seattle's three keys to victory for a win on Sunday? Well, the first one is pretty simple, Mike. They've got to be able to pass protect. And I'm not asking this offensive line to play like the 2005 group that had Walter Jones and Steve Hutchinson up front. They don't have that kind of talent. But at the same time, Connor Williams is a huge upgraded center. Lakin Tomlinson's an established veteran. Mm -hmm. You love your left tackle, Charles Cross, who actually was the one real bright spot from this offensive line last week. Played really well against the Denver Broncos. Who's going to be starting at right tackle? Is it going to be George Fant? Is it going to be Stone Forsythe? Is it going to be rookie Mike Jarrell? We don't know who's going to be starting over there. So there's all kinds of questions with this offensive line that's trying to build some continuity, a lot of new pieces. But they have got to be able to keep Keon White and company away from Geno Smith enough that Geno Smith can make plays downfield. You don't have to give him five seconds in the pocket to do that. Geno Smith can make – he can make million dollars – out of a couple of pennies if you just give him a little bit of time to throw the football. But last week, early in the game, they weren't giving him that opportunity, and that was one of the reasons the offense floundered for two quarters. Once they were able to get their run game going a little bit and the pass protection got better as the game progressed in the second half, Geno completed almost 80% of his passes in the second half. If you allow Geno Smith to have enough time that he can operate the offense and he can get the ball to his playmakers, maybe get a few more shots downfield with the talent they've got in that receiving core, as good as the secondary is for New England, if you are able to block things up well enough that Geno Smith can get the ball downfield, that is going to be a difficult task for even the Patriots secondary, especially with some of the safety injury concerns that you mentioned earlier. It provides an opportunity that the Seahawks can get the job done offensively. I think they're going to have to be better throwing the football than they were last week to get a win on the road. For that to happen, the pass protection is key number one, two, and three for this football team. Mm, uh, absolutely agreed, and I think that is something that Seattle will definitely look to exploit for on, uh, against New England on Sunday. Look, if you're looking at it from a Patriots perspective, once again, the Patriots need to establish the run, and this is something, again, that we've talked about earlier on in this segment, and I've talked about ad nauseum on Locked On Patriots all week long. All of the way that Alex Van Pelt wants to run this offense comes through the running game, and it comes through Andre Stevenson, and he once again has to establish himself as someone that can be a key on the ground and get yardage and be able to facilitate what this Patriots team wants to do. Now, one thing that they have to do with establishing the run is utilize play action, take deep shots down the field, make sure that this passing game gets involved. To do that, they're going to need solid blocking from the offensive line. They got it from the right side last week, Corbin. They didn't get it from the left. Chuksakora for Definitely looked like a fish out of water at left tackle. He struggled. He was pulled after only 10 snaps. Veteran Vidarian Lowe came in and played a little bit better. They looked like they were a little more comfortable, but the Patriots' left side is still a big problem. And right now, City So, their starting left guard, was also not at practice on Wednesday. It's going to look like he may end up missing this week as well, unless something drastically changes. So now you're looking at... A lot, an offensive line of Vidarian Lowe at left tackle, Michael Jordan at left guard, David Andrews at center, Layden Robinson playing right guard, and Michael Wenu playing the right tackle position. Again, the right side is going to be good, but you know Seattle is going to zero in and try to force Ramondre to run to the left. And they're also going to try to exploit that left side and get after the passer in Jacoby Brissett. So if they can't do that, they won't be able to establish what is my second key to victory, and that's control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Patriots did a great job of doing that on both offense and on defense against Cincinnati. It's going to be much tougher to do that against Seattle. And then the last, certainly not least, 
Same as last week. The Patriots are going to have to win the turnover battle, and they're going to have to take advantage of miscues on the opposite side of the ball. Seattle is not a team that's prone to turn the ball over, but the Patriots need to at least force one or capitalize on a miscue, get good field position, put Seattle on its heels, and then they've got that puncher's chance to come away with the victory. And I'm glad that we're talking the run game because I think from Seattle's perspective, if there's one thing that travels well consistently, if you can run the football, running the ball is something that can help your chances of winning when you go into a hostile road environment like Gillette Stadium. And we don't know where Ken Walker III's health is at. Now, he told reporters after Sunday's game that he was fine. So if I had to make a prediction right now, I expect that K-9 is going to be out there and he is going to be starting and he's going to get plenty of carries, going to get his opportunities in the passing game. But Seattle's got to have that balance. They have got to be able, not that they need to go out and run for 150 yards in this game, but they need to be effective running the ball because that was one of the ways they were able to take some of that pressure the Broncos were putting on Geno Smith off the quarterback in the second half and give them a little bit more of an opportunity to get the ball downfield and get the ball to his receivers. And the last key for me on the defensive side of the football, you got to win early downs. And this plays into New England's ability to be able to throw the football because I think if the Seahawks can come out and they can shut down Ramondre Stevenson on first and second down on those early down runs and consistently put New England in third and six third and seven or longer if they can do that if I'm the Seahawks with Boy Mafe and the pass rushers that they've got even without Uchina Nuosu who's not going to play this week right. they've still got weapons that can get after the quarterback if I'm consistently putting New England in third and medium and third and long situations I'm excited about my ability to be able to get after Jacoby Brissett and force him into making some bad decisions with that secondary as opportunistic as Devin Witherspoon, Rick Wool, and Julian Love and those guys are. If you are able to speed up that clock and you consistently have the Patriots in those third and medium, third and long situations, that's what plays into your turnovers and plays into your quick changes and gets the ball back into the offense's hands. So I'm not even looking at the third down percentage. I'm looking at first and second down. Can you consistently keep Ramondre, uh, Ramondre Stevenson bottled up, that Patriots run game bottled up? Because if you can do that and limit the yardage in early downs, it plays into Seattle's strengths against a New England team that I don't necessarily know has the pieces to be able to consistently convert third and long opportunities with their passing game. Yeah, with that passing game, it's going to be very difficult. And again, you're dealing with an untested passing game. And you're dealing with a lot of young receivers that right now ran a lot of short routes last week. If those routes are elongated the way the Patriots hope, it's right now a guessing game as to how that's going to go, especially with a makeshift offensive line providing protection and Jacoby Brissett having to rid himself of the ball probably quicker than he'd like. Those two don't often go together on a football field. It's going to be very interesting to see Seattle's um, range and Seattle's uh, ability to get after and their game plan. And it's also going to be very interesting to see how the Patriots plan on countering that on their home turf in their home opener Sunday, 1 p.m., Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. The Seattle Seahawks visit the New England Patriots in week two of the 2024 NFL season. 